Um, for us, we sell a ton of Zima, and it's cheap, and it works well, and the GUI is fantastic. And uh, I'm gonna say we've heard the story before, but we, you know, we had CC, CCC and CCR and what have you. And um, for me, I know that this is they're you know kind of simplifying a complex call center, bringing it down into our market space, which sounds exciting, right? And customers are asking for more than even the Dev Connect partners can supply. And some of the Dev Connect partners take over the whole PBX, right? You, you put in a ZCom solution, and the value that I bring forward is nil. I can't sell maintenance. Uh, I don't have any control of user rights. I mean, that's just a specific example, but it's you know across the board with BBX or some of the other Dev Connect partners. So I would say we're you know optimistically petrified. <laughs> that is so perfect. We, we, we also sell ZCom and and Zima, and and that is so perfect. We. A lot of us went through a lot of pain with AACC. That, that, was, a night, that was a waking nightmare. And so, um, this sounds a little in conflict, and yet another discussion within the last year with someone at Avaya saying, listen, man, if you can get a good contact solution in skin on IP office, the way that's going, you could take over the world. But cautiously, optimistically frightened is perfect because we gotta see, we got to see that thing work for a while and make sure it's stable and it is everything that it's advertised to be. If it is, it could be a real winner. Do you feel that's perhaps the last missing gap in the portfolio, or do you feel there's other portfolio items that you, you need in your tool bag to serve your customers? Uh, can you let me talk some? I'm uh, Andrea from i5 Solutions in Brazil. I'm the only partner here in, from Cala. <laughs> So uh, for us, the, this, this, this offer is, was very, very important because there was a lack, lack in the market for um, big call centers and, and small call centers. We didn't, we don't have um, an offer sp specific for the mid market. So for us, in, specifically in Brazil, it's a huge opportunity uh, to sell IP office as a, as a contact center. Uh, my company is very focused on, on, on large, call, large call centers. We have a, a bigger. Uh, Operations of services, so um, we were not so so much in the UC market, but uh, for for call centers, it opened us uh, a big road for, for for new opportunities. And you haven't been selling one of the Dev Connect partners, like Zcom or Presence Technology, or uh, no we Altitude. Have, yeah, we sell, we sell Altitude. Brazil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's very strong in the yeah. market for outbound solutions. Uh, but uh, Avai now is, is now is launching outbound solutions in, in, in Brazil, I think in Cal also. So uh, we have some, some uh, local dev connection solutions also that we sell. So uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an offer that we think will be very successful. Okay. I told the Avai execs about a year ago, I think it's by Zcom. I said, well, we already have six contact center platforms. I said, well, what's one more? <laughs> 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 so they gave you two today. They gave us two today. <laughs> one of them, isn't it a watered-down version of AACC? Yeah. Yeah. And is that the missing, is there anything else in the portfolio you feel that you need to... A scalable video solution in that market. Right. I mean, that isn't a pure MCU play. Right. So, would so you, you buy a room system and it you know, has eight video streams and you want the ninth user in and you, you know, forklift that out and you have to buy an MCU, right? The, the, the disparity in price from $10,000 to $80,000, I mean, that's a tough pill to swallow, right? And you, you talk about business transformation going in and talking about video and mobile and ways to transform your business. Um, customers want, especially in the business unit, line of unit, uh, when you're talking to non-IT people is the best way to put it. They're putting their brand, they're putting their name out there, and they want to test it first, you know, because it's new, right? Especially when you think about, you know, virtual loan officers is something that we're working a lot on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these banks want to be able to make sure that that works and the customers are going to adapt to it. And it's it's tough to say, okay, well, I'm just going to try this and throw $100,000 and put my brand and my name on it. So would a software-based MCU make more sense for you, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, instead of the DSP resource that's on right. our clients? Thank you. The, the new strategy is focused to the mid company, but the mid company, the mid market in the US is very different to the mid market in Canada. 
Ghana, the, the medium companies are uh, about 100 people, something like that. It's very few that has more than 2,000, and they are the big ones. How can the channels lower this strategy for companies for 50 or 100 employees? Well, uh, in Brazil, there's not so there are not so many few large call centers. There are a lot of large call centers. So most of these call centers are, uh, are via X directly in this in these call centers on the service side and uh, on the selling side with with partners. But for the mid market, uh, it's also a competitive market. So all of the vendors are there. Our presence is now based in Brazil. We have Interact Intelligence. Cisco is there, um, most of them, but uh, I think the, 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 no, not all the channels from these, these vendors are prepared for this market. I see, I see more the, most of the channels that come from the, the Avaya, the infrastructure side, they're more prepared for, for take, taking this market. So um, everybody is preparing to, to attack with this, these new solutions. Yeah, in Latin America, when, when you talk in the U.S. about SMB being a thousand users, that to us is a huge customer. Uh, probably a good medium point for us is 125, 150 users. That's a high end of the SMB. So it's a very different market, uh, you know, uh, per view, if you will, than what you have in the U.S. So some of these solutions that they target for the mid market uh, that are complex for us, they're really um, much more complex than, than a lot of our business partners uh, are able to handle. Now we do have quite a few large uh, call centers, uh, but most of those are uh, handled by Avaya. Uh, we're starting to see some call centers coming in from, you know, from the from Asia and so forth back into the region, uh, and, and there's a there's a lot of activity. Uh, but again, we you have the high end and then the low end. There's very little in in that mid section. So some of these applications they really sound good, but uh, to implement uh, some of those things at a 125, 150 level customer. Uh, does make a lot of sense, so that's kind of thing. That, that whole scalability issue uh, becomes a, a real a thing for us. So anything that can be brought down to our market size would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you know, so we can implement it. Um, I think other other important point uh, of your question is the challenge for for cloud solutions. When we talk about this market, we see a lot of cus uh, a lot of customers that uh, are seeing cloud solutions for. Or, uh, to take uh, adherence of this uh, market, you know? so most of them um, are looking for that. You know? So it's Im that's important for uh, for Avaya to to go to to cloud also. So what are you hearing from customers as far as Link and integrating to Microsoft Link? I have that conversation daily with customers. I mean, we're, we're we actually have in our lab built out in 2010 and 2013 in Ireland because every customer I talk to, especially what you know, I mentioned earlier, where we have the transactional guys that go out and they sell the AV and they do their thing, but when we're brought in, we're sponsored you know, by the folks that they typically work with up into the organization on the technical side and on the business side. And on the business side, you know, they're hearing, you know, it's free, video is free, this is free, everything's free because you already have the licenses, hopefully. Um, but there, there's not a conversation that we don't have at the enterprise level with our customers about architecting a solution that leverages an integration path to link. It, it could be voice, it could be video, it could be everything. And how many of those are integration discussions with uh, Avaya's uh, plugin? Uh, so, when a buyer is involved, that, that's exact. That's you know kind of where our specialty is, is being able to speak to that level of those customers. Um, I would say, eighty percent again of our customers, in that conversation is happening. It, it's probably more more so on the video side than on the voice side, because a lot of a buyer, a lot of the buyer customers, they they're happy with the way the buyer UC platform works, and a lot of them don't really see the value of driving video control through Link. Even though you think of from a single user, you know, experience that would be more advantageous, but we, we don't get that a whole lot. Uh, they really want to try to make video work because everyone's saying video is free now with Link, but there's there's a big tax to that. 
I'll add the uh, K-12 education uh, perspective on video. Right now, most of the districts that we deal with in the state of Wisconsin just do not have the infrastructure to push video through it, and some have tried. And Microsoft, that I don't know if you know, but they really cut their prices when it comes to education. Oh, yeah. So we're it's fully prepared that. that once we get the infrastructure to a point where video is even a conversation with them, that links will be there, no doubt about it. Yeah. And, and we'll have to deal with that point. Yeah, I think about a year ago, I, I mentioned this in a, in a meeting uh, with uh, John Galuba. Um, so he, I mentioned, uh, you know, we got customers coming to us asking us if we can integrate the Avaya environment with the uh, with Link, and we have to say yes because if you say no, uh, they're going to go find somebody else, and then we're going to lose account control because that whoever that Microsoft reseller comes in, they're going to try to pitch or rip and replace, and so we have to say yes. So we we found ourselves um, ramping up our Link practice. And we've done a number of deployments. We've actually done a couple rip and replaces. Uh, this is customer driven. Either do it or you don't. Um, I mentioned this to Delulo, and he turned to Sheila, who runs the services uh, in Avaya, and asked her if Avaya has any capabilities of doing link integration. And she basically said, no, they don't. So really, it's on us to take that on. And it's all about just maintaining account control. And I think it's good for Avaya that we can do that. We have built out a link practice. And a lot of the larger national business partners in the US, I think they're, um, they're coming out of the closet now with their link practice. They've been kind of hiding it from Avaya. Do you see that as a bridging strategy? Are you, are they, are you just putting it on life support before they actually rip and replace? Or do you feel that this is going to be, this coexistence is going to be for Five years, ten years, or because uh, I just almost feel like it's, you know, putting a hand over the, the bleeding artery. You know, it's sort of. Yeah, I I can give an example. Like at Plantronics, they're in a bias shop, and um, that that was a bridge for them to get rid of the Avaya platform. I think the last island of Avaya there was the contact center, and I think they're getting ready to rip and replace that with a uh, hosted contact center. So it depends on the customer, not across the board, you can't say no. that. Yeah. But it, yeah, that is true. In some instances, they're just using us, right, to buy some more time. And, and But then, you know, that could last another two or three years. So. Sure. But is it usually at the point where the maintenance contract is up, or I2 feel okay and you can switch off the life support now, or what? what's the sort of reason for them to switch all link, or... Oh, just cut up, cut it all over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Usually, there's an event, something like a maintenance renewal. Yeah, that's a good time to consider dropping the buyer. Yeah. Of course, we don't want to see that in the market, and and now, but I think now buyer has got a, a better story now than they've had two, yeah. three years ago. Yeah. So I'm not as afraid as I was two, three years ago when we first started hearing about Link and how it's going to. I can tell you, Link is still delaying a lot of um, upgrade decisions. Installing it, and that's been hurting a buy on the enterprise level. It, have any of you installed ACA 6.2? The, the the latest link integration, which is the client side as opposed to the, the old server side integration. I have the prior to coming to this company. I have the <laughs> and is it better? And it, does it make it easy? Because I mean, I've seen a change from Avaya, you know, to your point, Dan, that they're a little bit more willing to support it, they're willing, you know, they want to make it work, they think there can be some coexistence, so I'm feeling like there's a more positive attitude toward that coexistence than there was in the past. There is, yeah, yeah. I think it's not a necessity, yeah, they have to, otherwise it puts a buy in a bad position. Because um, what happens if they say yes, then all the pressure kind of goes away, internally at a customer. Oh yeah, did we do link integration? Yes, we did. Check the box. We'll revisit this you know, uh, years down the road, right? Does this abide contact center? Does that help the link story? Because the relationship, almost, I used to work for Microsoft. It almost feels like as soon as you go into a strategic relationship with someone, it's the kiss of death for the other people. You know, it's Nortel, 
aspect. I just wondered, with, with Avaya's strength and contact centre, whether or not that's helping the, the link integration story. You know, we can integrate contact centre with the front end, sort of. Um, uh, sorry, we can integrate the front end contact centre with back end uh, skills people via yeah. link. Is there an integration? They, they story? don't. <laughs> yeah. There I, is no connection between Avaya contact centre and link. No. Ah. Okay. No, there is. <laughs> right, well, someone's told me Link's something different more... today, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's... Yeah. Okay, no, it's fine. Link is more a desktop. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, replacing the desk phone type solution. That's really. The contact center seems to be, you know, shielded from that. Uh, the link right. push. Yeah. It was just sort yeah, of suggested, suggested, the, like, suggested to me that there's going to be some sort of contact center. Front end back end. Yeah. Well, it didn't work on Link, but it integrated contact center from Avaya with, with Link. So basically, so information experts in the field of the organization that aren't basically defined as contact center agents per se, the agents have access to yeah. those subject matter experts via IM and whatnot. It's an area where there's interest, but uh, there's no product filling the right. void. Okay. People seem to be developing to that. Right, thanks. Okay. Is it a plus that Apache is now offering an uh, end to end solution? I mean, HP has it end to end, even a router or services and all these things. Cisco does it, Avalia does it, but a client really wants it? I mean, does a client want one provider or has to be one provider of the Wi Fi network, the US, the unified communication system, and uh, for example, the switches? I think customers are, and they've already gone through that Cisco thing for the past how many years now with a single, single manufacturer, single source, and I think they've realized, especially the, uh, the CFO and you know, the CIO realized that once that occurs, that the Cisco has a lot of leverage on them. So now, now what you're seeing in the market is um, people are going after best of best of breed for each uh, technology. And also the line of businesses too are also dictating what they want. You know, a lot of times they're not choosing Cisco, for example, or contact center, right? Um, you could have a, a pure Cisco environment, including the contact center, and then you have a con some uh, business leader for contact center wanting to rip and replace the Cisco contact center go with the Maya. Uh, you've seen that. Um, but yeah, you don't, as far as uh, customers saying, hey, I want to buy, everything Avaya. I'm, I'm not seeing it because the infrastructure refreshes for each technology are kind of on different timelines. Yeah. And in, in the K-12 market, I would echo those thoughts that the best of breed, that there's really nothing end-to-end, -end, one manufacturer in, in the school districts. And because we're selling to the, the business managers and superintendents, they're just, show me the results. And, and from an engineering standpoint, when we do that, they could really care less what's on the back end. Does it work? I would add, if you're doing the right thing as a systems integrator, you're making it as seamless and painless as possible anyways. So you're creating maintenance plans and structuring deals that basically allow you to incorporate all the products that you're selling a particular customer into that plan as, a, as an SI. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, what makes what helps me and do in my job is when customers have different technologies in their business because I focus on integrating the technologies they have to meet their business needs and help them with workflow and business process. As, a, as in terms of, sorry, uh, managing a business, you're also incredibly sticky as a partner. I mean, if you've done a great job of doing those things, then you've got disparate technologies that are working together seamlessly in a great solution that addresses all their business needs, but the needs, but there's different logos in there. And it's very hard for someone else to come in and punt you out. And that's got a lot of value when you're running a business. Yeah. It's funny because this is all in conflict with sell the stack. And it's not just a buyer that you know is relentless with that message. They they all are mm -hmm. sell the stack. But it's a little bit in conflict with some things that are good for bars. You know, and to that point, you know, you've heard customers are now more um, intelligent. They don't need salespeople as much because they go online, they can learn everything about the product. It used to be in sales, you just need to know 1% more than your customer, right? And you, you're good. But 
now customers are very well read and you know, get all the information. It's readily available to them. The one thing they can't get online is how to integrate different uh, different environments, and that's the value we bring. And then once we sell, once we sell that system integration, they're going to want us to manage it. All right, and that's the value we provide. Yeah, that, that was one of the points I was going to make. Today, customers are a lot smarter than they used to be. They'd be ready to get out there. They've already done the research, and you try and sell a stack, whether it's one vendor or the other vendor. They've already done their homework. They know exactly what's going on. And like you say, the value of integrating different uh, solutions together, that's something that the partner uh, can bring to the table. And uh, I think that uh, that uh, also the, some of the partners are, like you mentioned earlier, uh, Hawaii has come with different solutions. And every couple of years, they change either from Extreme to Juniper or whatever. So uh, some of the partners are saying, I'm not going to go in and recommend something else now, because a year and a half later, they may come up with something new. So I lose credibility. So I think that the partners uh, in, in some of the, our regions have, uh, have gotten used to selling the best in each category. And, right. and that's kind of what they're doing. I think it's going to take some time for us to be able to get people to really sell the, the entire stack once it's proven that it's, that it's in fact the best solution. Yeah, what's changed in, in, in recent years is um, the manufacturers used to be in the driver's seat. They dictated us what we're going to sell. Now we're in the driver's seat because right? we sell this portfolio of different manufacturers. So we, uh, they, they have to actually uh, make sure they're taking care of us instead of us taking care of them. It's kind of turned. So when do you lose deals to who and why? Because I went up there. <laughs> In general. <laughs> now, who are the tough competitors? Yeah. Yeah. That's an easy one. In the K-12 market, we lose deals to finances. They Just simply don't have the yeah. money, and then you know fundraising efforts or tax levies or whatever they can think of to come up with it. So uh, the technology that we bring to the K-12 market is they want it. It works. They know it. How are we going to pay for it? I live in California. I know. <laughs> we, um, we lose uh, when in the, in the video space, video conference, I'll speak to that. The AV stuff is a whole other world. But specific with video conferencing, you typically know what the, the right platform is and what you're competing with. And reg deal registration can be a killer in that. So it becomes a price play unless you're able to elevate that discussion and do more things. and talk about a broader approach than you may be just at the tactical level of the IT department. You're driving other areas of the business, driving into other areas of the business, uh, more of a value. That's uh, when we win and when, uh, when we can win over that. Um, with Avaya specifically, I, I told them, and here's what one of the tactics of the three that I, I outlined is disruptive. So we're not going to completely replace uh, uh, other manufacturers that we sell with RadVision. What we are going to do is we're going to look at areas where we are competing and we don't have deal registration or perhaps there's budget concerns a customer has and we can't get that that uh, video conferencing solution sold based on those criteria, is gonna sneak in there and we're gonna win there because we're gonna be able to disrupt that sale with a better price and uh, there's not a lot of people that can sell Radvision video anymore, so. That's, is somebody's dead set on hosted in, in our market space. And then in short I would say 12, 18 months ago, I mean, they're in our backyard, right? We're in our, our headquarters is in San Francisco, but with 8.1 and 9.0, it has been amazing that we've been able to put them to sleep in most deals, let's say 100 to 500 stations. So posted is where we're having to compete more. Um, but if we're having this conversation 18 months ago, we would be dancing on the table that we had to do something about short -tell. But why not now? They did. Eight. I mean, the, IP office 8 and 9. Yeah, yeah, I mean, IP office 8 and 9. I mean, the, the technology stack that, that, that's been able to come out, the virtualization, the SIP mobile soft phone integration mm -hmm. with Rapid. I mean, it's it's a really, really nice story, and it's a short tail killer. I mean, they, they just can't come back. The only thing that they have at this point is the financial situation, and then we come back with as strong of a story against them, and it's, you know, it's 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 kind of ceased at this point, which is, which is interesting. You know, you never thought you'd see the day. Yeah, by the IP office, even before 8.1, was a strong platform. If you stack it up against Shortel, uh, it, it had a good story, but just nobody was telling it properly. So 8.1 kind of 
corrected some of the holes that Shortel was attacking on the IP Office product. And uh, yeah, if you know the story and know how to um, deliver it, Shortel's very good at marketing and delivering uh, and pointing out their strengths, right? And, and that's what they focus in on their demos. Yeah. But they, they do have a contact center, and you don't. They have an integrated in, you know, contact center inside, so that doesn't become a deal breaker, obviously. It hasn't. Yeah. No. There's, there's customers that are actually waiting for the Avaya contact center to come out to vet that out before they're willing to make a decision. Uh, or you compete with Aura. I'm sorry? Or you compete with Aura. Or third party products that hold on to IP. Or third party, so like Zcom. Right. Right. We were talking about earlier Zcom. And then specifically in the Canadian market, too, there's another player that we had that we found gone dormant as well, which was Mitel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were a huge player in the SME market in Canada. And you know, the last 12 months, I don't think I've competed with them once. And they used to be in every deal we were in. They sure. just basically disappeared. It'd be interesting to see what happens after the news yeah. a couple of days yeah. ago. Yeah. You know what's really interesting in Canada, um, I don't want you guys, but and I'd love to know how Cala, how this is happening there, but we're cyclically a year or two behind the United States as far as cloud. We don't lose to cloud. We actually, for any one we do lose to a, to a cloud solution provider, we displace two or three that are ripped out. Because the, the really early adopters, the smaller guys that are out doing it way ahead of when they can actually execute properly, are in there, you know, scuffing their knees pretty hard, and we're, t we're taking them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know that's not going to stay, that it's just part of the cycle, but it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know what it's doing it's in same, Cali. It's Is the it? same uh, situation. Uh, everybody's seen cloud, but uh, we don't lose for cloud also. Yeah. But uh, people are asking us about cloud, yeah. are, are, are making surveys about cloud, are, are, are reading about cloud. So I think it's part of the cycle. One of the times it's going to happen. Yeah, you know? yeah I'm sure that, you know, in the United States, it's further ahead in its yeah. evolution. Yeah, so. of course. I was just say, being that there's no dominant player in cloud, right? it's, it's, it's made it less persuasive. Mm. You know, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like an emotional thing, but there's not that one player that you know has a rock solid cloud solution. Yeah. And if you buy that solution, it's going to work. Um, I think it slowed down the whole kind of the buzz, the, the magic, if you will. Yeah, we found the same thing. We're, we're pulling out those solutions. What the small business owners are saying is they, they just see them paying the same amount perpetually. And that's the common reason why I say, hey, we want to look at something different. And plus, they don't like the feature set and the, and the service they're getting. Um, and then the other thing is when we um, do go up against a hosted offer, it really becomes more of a financial issue than a technology discussion. Uh, excuse me. Regarding the question about the competitors and the answers that you shared with us, how challenging are you finding it to aim to the goal of selling the whole stack of solution from Avaya and to access the benefits? Considering that for some of those technologies such as networking and video, you have a strongly um, you have competitors strongly positioned with the products in the market. And what are you doing about that? Uh, uh, just to kind of continue on the hosted, these hosted players like 8x8, Ring Central, they're kind of big in our area. Mm -hmm. um, they, they can deliver uh, voice, you see, hosted solutions, but what they they can't do is deliver the entire portfolio that customers are looking to get, like the data infrastructure and the wireless and such, which we can do. So to me, they're, they're, they're kind of at a disadvantage. They're only really addressing a sliver of that market. I would agree. I think the biggest thing, I mean, the promise of cloud is that it's simplified and, you know, they're taking all the control away. There's nothing you have to manage anymore. But in reality, what we're finding is they're, they're so focused on just delivering, you know, that one function. Yeah. They won't even do, like, a, a bunch of them won't sell CPE. So they're like, you know, we'll deliver... You know, this platform, no, you got to go and fulfill it and integrate it on your own. And yeah. That's kind of completely opposite of what the cloud's supposed to deliver. 
So right now we have systems integrators. But I think what we're going to see evolving are cloud integrators. Cloud brokers. Yeah. That do what we do, but again, use just utilizing a different delivery method. Multiple clouds. Yeah. Already seen that. Just today, New Voice Media, which is a contact center, <coughs> got together with Twilio to do enterprise communications and as sort of a cloud-to-cloud -cloud scenario. Yeah. Can I jump in here? Um, and I apologize because I usually leave a, at least 10 minutes for uh, the turnabout for the partners to ask the analysts and media questions. Um, but we don't have to leave here until at least 2.30, so if you want to stay, that's fine. Uh, we do have to be out. I think you're going to play poker in here, so maybe you still want to stay. But, um, so there is something to do this afternoon. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm here. so anyway, uh, usually, as I said, we allow you know the partners who are here, they've been great uh, fielding the questions from the analysts, and so far I'm not crying, so that's pretty good. Um, now it's your turn. These are uh, folks that talk to all kinds of vendors, they talk to all kinds of customers, uh, they can give you perspective on the market. They'll have to tell you when their fee kicks in, but um, we'll, <laughs> we'll let them decide that at this point. So, you know, feel free to pick their brains, and if you have questions you'd rather ask privately, I'm sure an exchange of cards is welcome. So, anybody want to feel to the analysts in the media? What have you heard about the uh, IPO? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> right, we don't hear anything more about it than you do. Um, you know, all, all that you hear is that there's another company standing by as well, right? The, the old Siemens Unify has also been sort of, it hasn't gotten as far as the S1 as, as Avaya has, but would like to also go IPO. And they're standing by to see how Avaya does first. It's like how one goes, the other goes. Um, I think probably Mitel Astro will try and do the same as well. So I, you know, I think it's a, it's a wait and see game. I don't think anybody's rushing in. It's interesting to hear Matt talk about it, right? The, the guy who, who presented he's, here. He's good. You know, he says he's ready to go. He's got the S1 written. He's ready to go. It's, it's market conditions. He's real comfortable with his numbers. Um, I don't see it happening anytime soon. I, I think talking, Genesis will beat them. I think Genesis will beat them. I was talking to a channel in Colombia earlier this morning, and he was telling me the, that this was a solution that can make him grow because the focus that it has and the segment that it works. Because it isn't too good, it isn't too bad. It's just what the, the, the customer, mid customer Colombian mode needs. So he's looking at it as a one of the um, best products in 2000. What are you guys hearing from customers as far as uh, Thank you. You know, single source or, or you know one product, a stack? And the customers typically, like, there was a Gartner report a couple of years ago that they came out and they talked about that. But uh, what are you guys hearing? Customers wanted it all in one? So I, th I think on the contact center side, uh, that we can put that to bed fast. I think there is a, an all-in-one strategy, a little bit more so than on the UC side. I think in terms of workforce optimization and reporting and recording and all this other stuff, um, not having to have as many pieces. So I think some of the all-in-one players are having a better, you know, are having success against embedded base of IA because of that. So I, I think at least on that side, people are saying, yeah, I just want to turn one on. We, um in, in some of our countries, uh, we've gotten questions about security, all this NSA has been going on, uh, and concerns about the cloud. Is that also happening in the U.S.? Are people yeah. concerned about security? Because some of the customers that were looking at clouds, all of a sudden they're really reconsidering uh, whether or not they want to go that direction for security issues, and, and they're really putting the decision on hold. So is the same thing happening? Oh, yeah. yeah, my, my husband's US? company was looking into going to the cloud, and after the whole <laughs> NSA thing, they said, nope, no way. I do think it's more outside of the U.S. I think yeah. there's more concerns outside, to be honest. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> it's good for you? You're liking this? Yeah, well, NSA, hey. Because the NSA, you can do something. So as far as the question about all-in-one or whatever, um, it, it depends on the size of the company. You know. Clearly, the smaller companies, they're going to want 
you know, one, th one product, one throat to choke, you know, the brilliantly simple or whatever. Um, but the larger companies, I don't think it's, they're willing to go best of breed, but they want a reseller or a system integrator or someone to, to put it all together so that they don't have to. So they don't care what's behind it, you know, and, and they're fine with best of breed, but they don't want to have to deal with all the different pieces. They want someone else to do that. I think that, that's encouraging to hear because mm -hmm. that's, you know, obviously what we, we try to do. Which you do. Mm -hmm. Or partner where we can. Mm -hmm. What we have heard quite frequently is the battle of good enough versus best of breed. Mm -hmm. So we've heard, you know, the Skype, the link, the good enough discussion. That, that comes up quite a lot. And uh, it's the typical, why pay for 500 features when you only use 10? You know, that complexity, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's just not worth the premium. So we're hearing a lot about good enough versus best of breed, which is quite an interesting. That sounds like an IT professional talking. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I think you can say that same thing. But when you when you get into the business, when you start talking about process workflow, good enough is not does not apply across the business. You're missing something, and then you get accused of not providing the right solution to the customer. So I I, I hear what you're saying. I, I think, and you're right on. Is that that's at the IT level? Is good enough is, is what they sometimes have to do more work. Can, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean the things I do make make it more complex for the IT guys, and I don't care because people I'm talking to have all the money. <laughs> you know, I think it's happening too. Is the the IT guys who inherited the voice environment a few years ago, all of a sudden the Microsoft guys coming up to them and tapping on the show. Hey, we got link licenses here. We got enterprise enterprise license. Why don't we deploy link? And the IT guy looks at him and says, oh, you want to take voice off my hands? Great. Here it is. Take it. You know, we're seeing that. Because um, now you're getting the, um, kind of the application, the, the group that owns the applications within an enterprise, they're taking over voice because of, uh, I think, the willingness of IT to give up the voice to them. What tends to happen there is uh, a lot of customers will actually self-deploy. They've got the skills in-house to spin up on virtual servers, link, and then it's it's like me with DIY. You know, I I end, in call, I end up calling an expert because I can't handle plumbing, or I've made a muck up with the electrics and I have to call in an electrician. They they go so far, and then when it's the voice piece, they, they sort of, you know, they, they call in an SI to help. So a lot of link deployments are flying in under the radar. I, I was going to see if there's a question that I could could ask back, which was, um, do you find a lot of are you still getting involved in a lot of RFPs, RFIs, or, or uh, the, uh, you know, we saw slides up there that the buying decisions are already being made. Are you just fulfilling that, or, or do you have to spend a lot of time and hours um, responding to RFPs and RFPs? Yeah, uh, the amount of RFPs seems to have gone up right. this year. Yeah, we're seeing more RFPs. And we see it too. It's a resource training. It's, you know, everyone's due diligence around expenditures. It's, it's just an economic driver. If something, everyone's buying anything that's more expensive than a pencil, it's going to RFP now. Yeah. A lot of uninformed uh, kind of, or non-educated RFPs. Like, RFPs, my oh, goodness, yeah. we go into tons and it's just, who wrote this thing, you know? And we, and yeah, all, all, we all avoided them like yeah. a plague yeah. for so long, but we can't. Yeah. Anymore now we have to get good at it because it's just make a process out of it. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, at least in Wisconsin, the, the RFP, the approach that we take, we actually help them write the RFP mm -hmm. so that it's favorable to the solution. You're not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you say that out loud. We don't know. <laughs> I said so. It's favorable for the school district's best interest. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. What's Avaya's biggest risk in the next? I'm sorry. What do you believe Avaya's? You know, what's Avaya's biggest risk in the next 12 months plus? Avaya. I think it's adding more complexity to a portfolio that seems to be simplifying. I, I think less less is probably more in terms of, you know, in, in terms of not having to split up your resources in, into more and more different. Um, product lines, I, I think if you can simplify and rationalize that, that product line, it'll be easier for a buyer, easier for channels, easier to support. I, I think that there's too many vendors out there that are, are just looking, they're, they're going completely wild in terms of adding more and more and more and more features, functions, 
products, and it should really be more about simplifying them down to the business case and, and segmenting the users based on what they want to do. I think, interestingly enough, today versus a year ago or two years ago versus Cisco, you're in a better position. The Cisco right now, with a new management and collaboration, who's great, he's very good, it's going to take him a year or so to figure out what it is he wants to do with that business and to yeah. sort of start implementing stuff. I was surprised him being in place as long as he has, eight or nine months, that we didn't hear that much when we went to Collaboration Summit last month as analysts, right? So I think it's another year. And so I, I would never buy into Cisco right now because you, you don't know what's going to change in the way they're going to create products, deliver products. Why would you go with Jabber? Jabber could be gone in six months. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're in a much better position right now not to get blown out by Cisco than, you, than you've been in years. Uh, for me, if you think the, the last two conferences, the move from Avaya to a software company, and right now that we are seeing is they are trying to deliver a, to, to, to be a middleware company, like in IBM with its software services. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you are prepared to add value with this middleware that they are trying to build. We write apps to collaboration environment. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. How do you feel about collaboration environment? Well, I think it's a good story. Uh, I mean, you could sell one today, but you know what apps you can deploy on it today. It's a, you know, it'll be probably six to twelve months ahead of everybody else. It's like year one of WebSphere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, sorry, um, Cisco, and you know, but although we do some of that in the data side, and we all compete with them, or most, many of us so much. What do you hear customers saying about Cisco now? What's the street saying? Because, I mean, there was, uh, everyone was worshipping at the altar of Cisco for so long that we, we, we sense that's changed, but what, what are you, what are you hearing? In the, S, in the SMB market, the B6K, the B6000 is getting a lot of traction, but I think that's mainly because the channels have found an attractive, well-positioned, nice price point product after having, what, eight, eight different products to address the SMB space with, so now they've rationalised, put it onto one, Contact center, you know, call manager. But it's uh, M. But it's M. It's not S. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. It, what does it the same about IP office? Yeah, it's it's, it's it's interesting. But they they they've got one product to address that, and I think largely, by and large, it's the channels that are pushing it because it's the only thing that they've got. They're, they're comfortable selling it. it. It's it's really good in terms of um, margins. It's a competitively priced product. Um, but I, I'd say the same thing though. Two years ago. If I were you, I would have been concerned that Cisco could displace Avaya, right? Oh, yeah. Right? And today, I don't think you're in as much danger of that. Yeah. It's like, it's more of an equal story. It's like, why would I get rid of one? And, you know, they're both kind of, they both have their issues and they both have their strengths. Yeah. It was like this a, a couple of years ago. Avaya looked weaker, and they don't look as weak as they did. Well, if you look at, a, a, on the enterprise level, the spend, if you stack rank them, you probably have... Avaya, then Cisco, then Microsoft, and and the, the spend for Cisco over Avaya is probably two, three x, and then the spend of Microsoft over Cisco, and you can correct me, I'm, this is just me talking here, Mike is probably double of Cisco. So if I'm a CIO, CFO looking at this, well, if I can collapse maybe yeah. Avaya into Cisco or Avaya into Microsoft, then I only have two environments. I think I just put some exec on a Microsoft Link phone. I, really, I mean, my husband is working for a 60-person firm after having been an AT&T person for like 30 years and used to dial tone that worked. And they put a, the, the, the company on Microsoft Link and it's ridiculous and he screams and he yells and he kicks and they get rid of it. Um, yeah. So I think all you have to do is actually, you know, sure, put it on. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but, but in the future... <laughs> But in the future, if it will be a software game, Microsoft has some advantage. Yeah, they yeah, could they integrate better, SharePoint better. with yeah. unified communications yeah. because they have the partner for both sides. So they have some strengths if they yeah. if they have the chance to 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 yeah, be a player in, in in the game. If it if it's all the story is about software. But again, they're in a lot of flux this year as well with new people in charge of you know what was Link. 
somebody brand new, people changing. Yeah. Who cuts out someone else's in? They're right yeah. off on surface, and you know, all this. Yeah. They've got yeah. so many balls to keep their eyes on. Yeah, but this is the most that yeah, but they have the developers. Oh, I know. Us I'm not feeling like sorry the for them at all. So. Yeah. Yeah. Is there one more question, and then we're gonna. Let's Selfishly, it. video, the Rad Vision acquisition. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It's huge. Yeah. I think it's a big, big plus. Yeah. Big plus. I, mean, I, was, I was really impressed. We, um, our, our analyst organization, I have a, a, a phone that's delivered via iCore, a uh, nice Cisco phone on my desk in, in the UK. Um, that starts rebooting time and time again because I've got router issues with a firewall. Um, and AR from Avaya says, why not try Scopia? And uh, it found a way through my firewall issues, and we had a fantastic conference call, great HD experience. And, it really sort of opened my eyes to, you know, this really was a good acquisition. Well, the uniqueness of one click trial is, is really important. I, I think that's going to help accelerate. But I, I think what Avaya is not doing is they're trying to stay away from mentioning the Polycom relationship to the life size relationship. And a lot of customers, okay, we're Polycom, we're going to do video as a phone call, all that stuff. Then they go into life size, they start integrating SIP, session manager, 1020, 1030s. And then Avaya drops that. So customers are, are a little leery about you know, jumping on the, the bandwagon with video with Avaya because of those changes that they've they well, put. They did buy this one. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and that, and that was going to be my, my finishing yeah. point because it's an actual acquisition. Yeah, yeah. it does change it. the game. It, yeah. it, it, it absolutely does. But I think Avaya still needs to recognize that you know what they did really caused a lot of uh, for a lot of people who are making those decisions and then they go up and down, up and down. Well, that's similar to the context in earlier, the same conversation. Even if they have it now and it's their own, you're still leery of what they're going to put on IP office. You're going to okay, let's see your work first. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Do you, where do you see um, Google may potentially coming into the market? <laughs> Because I, I think Google's watching Microsoft. Everyone's worried. Microsoft's bigger compared. You know, you go to the WPC. Uh, I, I, I know Paul fairly fairly well. Um, he replaced me when I left Microsoft. Everyone, everyone is worried about Google just in case they do something. Yes. <laughs> and everyone's, it, it's almost like uh, Hussein Bolt. You, you, you know, you go to college track and field, and there's Hussein Bolt. You know, spectating, you think, what if he puts his running shoes on? You know, what if? It's always, it's always this, what if you're here? It, it's the, it's the sleeping giant. It's the sleeping giant that continues to sleep. You know, nothing really. Everyone's worried about them just in case they do something. But because they have all the pieces. They've they got, do. Right, but the business better. apps haven't done particularly well. In, you know, in they the they've got government, universities. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think the way you uh, Google over here has that with you. The Google's view of here is this year they're consolidating their chat application to the one because they have several good chat apps. Now they have a number of different voice related and video related apps with Google Talk and Google Voice and Hangouts and all that. So in 2014, the expectation is that they're going to start consolidating that all around Hangouts. And then, and then the next step they have to take is to move Hangouts fully into Google Apps yeah. and offer support around it and, and everything else. And right now, if you go to the Google Apps uh, website, it, it shows Hangouts as part of it. But it's not really. It's, it's all kind of smoke and mirrors. Because if you, you, you can use it for, for business purposes, but uh, they're not going to provide technical support. They're not going to provide integration. Uh, the, the integration between Google Talk and Voice and Hangouts is just all over the place. And so we're, we're just waiting to see if that happens. It's not really clear if they're going to do it. It, it. I think it all is going to hinge more on how um, how well they sell, continue to sell apps into the business space. Not so much concerned about competing against a guy or a sister or everyone else. They, they want they want apps to sell. 